An intense finish for Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Hi, I'm Jerry Seib, and I'm joined by Monica Langley, my colleague who's written a fascinating profile of the Secretary of State as she heads for the exits. She's going to leave office in a few weeks. This was supposed to be a smooth ride out, Monica. Mm -hmm. It's gotten a little rough along the way. How's she coping with it? She's coping well. She thought she was going to put in lots of appearances across the globe in her final few weeks. It's turned out she's done that and a whole lot more. And, and she's had to do a whole lot more because some things haven't gone well, particularly the attack on the consulate in Benghazi and Libya where the U.S. ambassador and three others tragically died. How much of a, of a preoccupation did you find that to be as you followed her around in recent weeks? Total, total preoccupation. She basically canceled her schedule that entire week when it occurred. Uh, that became her focus and it's remained her focus every day. Um, she's also carrying on all her other events. I, you know, I went to China with her before that occurred um, when she was doing an, a seven nation tour over 11 days. She came back, Libya occurred, that took her an entire week to handle that. Then she She's worked on that. Then she went to the United Nations General Assembly and Obama uh, did not uh, meet with any leaders. So she did all that for him as well as her own counterparts. And she's continued to do meetings and do traveling. But that's on her mind. But there was a sense. You, you were the, actually the first person who uh, heard the Hillary Clinton, I take responsibility for what happened in Benghazi line. That's right. Um, and there were there were some people who think she essentially threw herself under the bus mm -hmm. to benefit the president by doing that. What do you think her thinking and her calculation was in saying, I'm the one to blame if there were security lapses in Libya? She wanted to show that as the Secretary of State, the embassy security is her responsibility mm -hmm. and she wanted to show that she was willing to take that responsibility. An interesting thing that I found in reporting this story, Jerry, is that she also unbelievably, in some ways, given their strong and fierce partisan battle when they both ran for president last time, she has become increasingly close to President Obama. So in some ways she took that pressure off of him. She did, she did do this as a favor to, to Barack Obama. I, I don't think she would ever say it that way, but mm -hmm. it clearly had that effect until he himself, in a debate, took responsibility so as well. What signs did you see that these two people, who, as you say, had a very tense relationship four years ago, what are the signs that they've actually bonded over the last three and a half years and are closer now? They've always had a strong respect for one another and have worked fairly well together, people say. But in the last few weeks, and particularly culminating during Libya, um, they they started sensing that the decisions they make really have life and death. And when the bodies were flown to, Air, uh, to Andrews, um, when he finished his remarks, she grabbed his hand and held it. Mm -hmm. And then when they walked from the podium, he put his arm around her waist. And aides from both the White House and the State Department said, this is a closeness, closeness they had never seen between yeah. the two. You know, and they do things like, he sent her an iPod cover. She sent him an espresso machine when they talked about things they both needed. Yeah. So there is this new bond. And nobody would have guessed four years ago, I think. Totally. To yeah, exactly. So four years ago, four years from now. Exactly. <laughs> you cannot avoid the question with Hillary Clinton. Is she going to run for president? There is a great body of thought within the Democratic Party that she's inevitably going to run and most likely be the Democratic nominee in 2016, no matter how this election <laughs> turns out. You had to ask her that question. How does she deal with the question? And she acknowledges everybody is asking her that question. Right. You know, and at the Democratic Convention, she was in the tiny country of Timor-Leste when her husband spoke, and she watched it via satellite. Yeah. But she says, frankly, she says, I've ruled it out. On the other hand, <laughs> she says a teeny tiny opening that yeah. some Democrats hope she would act on. She says, I will always serve my country. So there you have it. Is that going to be a small opening if people beg her to run? Who knows? As they will. And her approval ratings are almost 70 percent. Right. She is clearly a favorite, not just among Democrats, but among Republicans as well. She reminds me in that regard of Colin Powell, who was one of those rare public officials whose approval is higher when he or she leaves office than when entering the office. Washington tends to work the other way around these days. Exactly. So your guess, is she going to take some time off and then seriously consider this question? You know, I think she doesn't know herself. Yeah. So it will be hard to say. I did spend a lot of time with her. And the one thing that's crystal clear, even at, uh, though she's a diplomat, she is one savvy politician. I mean, whether she's in China at a press conference with the foreign minister or whether she's at the UN or here in town, she is working the room. She knows the quick laugh, the, sm the great quip. She is one politician 
as much as her husband yeah. these days. And the one thing we know is that she's not leaving the public stage, whether she runs for president or not. She's going to be with us for a while. It's a fascinating read, Monica. Thanks Thank for you. sharing some of it with us. My pleasure. This is Jerry Side.